Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Desiree Alexander, aka Educator Alexander, and here's your five minute tip for this week. So, I want you to think about how can you do small group interventions when you have multiple educators. So, let's say I have a classroom teacher and a speech pathologist. Let's say I have a classroom teacher and a classroom paraprofessional, or maybe I have two co teachers, but one teacher wants to stay in, let's say, the Google Meet with the whole group while the other educator pull students out of class to meet with them in small groups. You can set that up using Google Classroom and Google Meet. So let's look at that. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm only going to create one classroom. I don't want my students joining 50,000 Google Classrooms and everyone having to have their own Google Classroom. So as the classroom teacher, I'm going to set up my Google Classroom and I'm going to come to people and invite whoever I may want to do those student pull them out of class. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to go ahead and type in the email address of the other educator that I want to invite. So as a teacher, that's all I can do at this point until this person accepts. So now I'm going to the other account and I'm going to give it a second or I may just refresh my screen. And now my other educator has the button and they can click accept. So now they will be a co-teacher with me in my classroom. So now what I'm going to do is actually go and set up just like you would do a breakout room, but I'm also going to set up you can call it an intervention room. You can call it really whatever you want to or just call it one of the breakout rooms. So I have my co-teacher in here. I'm going to come to classwork. So what I need to do is go and get the link to my regular Google Meet room. So I'm going to come here to the gear and I'm going to come down to Meet and click Generate Meet link. When I do that, I'm going to leave this turned on so it's always visible to my students because this is my main meeting room. And I'm going to click on this and click copy and then click save. So now I wanna set up my breakout rooms. So I'm going to come here to create and I like to create a topic to keep everything organized. And I'm going to call this breakout rooms. So now that I have my topic, and what I would do is I would drag this topic to make sure it's always up here at the top. So if I had multiple topics, I'm gonna to make sure this one is always at the top. So I'm going to come here to create material. And I'm going to call this breakout room one. I can put my directions here like, join us when I tell you to. Now of course, that's, I will put something more appropriate there. And then I'm going to paste that link. But this is the main breakout. So I can't keep this, it's what's called a nickname. I can't keep this the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some random things there. And I wouldn't put breakout room one and stuff that other people can also put. I'm just going to put something random because the students are just clicking on it anyway. And what I like to do, I kind of do double duty here. You don't have to. But I also like to come here and click add and put it here as a link as well. Do you have to do that? No, you can put it in one place or the other, but I like to put it in both places. And then I'm gonna come here and make sure that is in my breakout room topic and hit post. So that's how you set up breakout rooms. I will repeat that system as many times as I need to. And I have another video going through this process. So I would just do this, as many times as I need to. I'm just gonna call this breakout room two, for example. Then if you want to, again, you can take this and come here and put it here. And there we go. And we're gonna make sure this is under breakout rooms and post. So I'm gonna make sure my breakout rooms are in order. But now I wanna create a space where maybe I have my students in breakout rooms and I want another room for those students that need those small intervention groups. So what I can do is I'm gonna come back here 
and I'm still going to go to material, kind of the same process. Now, you really want to be careful with what you call the room. It's really up to you and how, what your school culture or what your school rules dictate. I'm just going to call mine intervention. So you can call yours whatever you would like to, or it could just be like breakout room five, and you know what breakout room five is for. So again, this will be pretty much the same process. Put any directions there that you want to. There you go. Same process here. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to send this to everyone because I only want this to go to maybe my students who actually get pulled out. So instead of sending it to everyone, I'm going to come here and send it to certain students. So I'm going to make sure the topic is in the breakout room. When I come here to all students, I'm going to choose which students to send it to. So if I know I have my student who's in speech, I'm going to make sure that that student is included. If I have my student who needs certain interventions or tests read aloud or anything like that, I'm going to make sure that that student is included. I don't have to send it to the whole population. So click, 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 click. Just check the students who you want to send this to and then hit post. So what's going to happen is your students who do not need to go to the intervention room, they're just going to see the other breakout rooms. Your students who need the intervention room are going to see all of the breakout rooms and the intervention room. Now, another helpful tip is I can also do this with the breakout room. So if I'm going to have steady scheduled students per breakout room, like Michael is always in breakout room one, then what I can do is sing breakout room one only to Michael. So when I come here and I'm doing my material and I'm, you know, posting the link and doing all that kind of stuff, well, this is breakout room two and I have 10 students that will always be in breakout room two. Then I can come here and only sing it. Sorry, wrong place. I can come here and only sing it to those 10 students. That way, your 10 students only see, they see breakout rooms, but they only see one breakout room. When you do that, if you're going to have, again, those, those assigned breakout rooms, then it kind of lessens the, oh, I went to the wrong breakout room. I forgot which room you told me. It lessens that because you're only seeing the one breakout room that I want you to go into. Now, if you want them to kind of mix it up every now and then, you know, Michael may be with Sarah one day and then he may be with Danny, then no, that's not going to work. Then you need to have them see all of the rooms. But just a tip, then if you have a student who's in the intervention room and an assigned room, then they'll only see two. They'll only see their breakout room and their intervention room. Okay, so now I want my co-teacher to go ahead and meet with those students while we're doing something else. So how that's going to look is, this is my secondary teacher. So when they come here, you'll see that they also see the breakout rooms. So if I'm like, hey, Ms. Smith, can you go meet with Johnny in the intervention room? Well, yes, I can. So the co-teacher can come click this on their computer, of course, and they can open up the breakout room. Because they're in here as a teacher, then that means they can join and open the room. Now, I've made it to where students cannot open the room. So there you go. So you saw that my co-teacher was able to do it because I put him or her in the Google Classroom as a teacher. So now they can open up any of these breakout rooms they want to and meet with the student because the students are, you know, enrolled in our class and I can continue to be in the main meeting room or, you know, doing whatever else we need to do. So that's how you can do this. If you want to see how to actually open the breakout rooms, let's look at that now. But if that's all you needed to know, you are done with this video. But now I'm going to show you how to open the breakout rooms and have your students join just so everything can be in one video. So if I was using this, what I'm going to do is open up the different breakout rooms. So we're ready, right? Maybe we're in the main meeting room and we're having fun. And I'm like, hey, kids, we're about to go ahead and go into the breakout rooms. So what I'm going to do as a teacher is I need to open up each one of these rooms. 
Now, pro tip. What I would do with this is I would come and take all of these links. Let me open it up first. I would come and take all of these links and I would just put them on the Google Doc. That way, if I am, you know, in a rush to open these rooms, I don't want to take five minutes to open up breakout rooms, right? So if I come here and create a Google Doc, and I just, you know, you can do a table, like breakout room one, and then put the link. I'm just going to type the link here. So if I put them all in here in a Google Doc, it's going to make it easier to where I can just pull up this Google Doc and go click, 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 and just click all the links. Because I don't have that set up, what I have to do is I actually have to come here and open them all up kind of the old-fashioned way. Click, open. See how much more time this takes? Click, open. So if I had them all in this Google Doc, I could just click, 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 and open up all my rooms. So I have all of my rooms. My student cannot come in this room just yet because I made it to where the student cannot start a room and they cannot be in a room without the teacher. So another pro tip is I like to pin my tab. So if I right click on here and ping it, notice that it took the X away. So I'm way less likely to hit the X by mistake. So I like to pin my tabs. I can also come here and unping them when I don't want them anymore, but I like to ping my tabs and that way I'm way more less likely to exit them out by mistake. So when I'm ready, join, join, and join. So now my students can come in here right now and start using the breakout rooms. Same thing with my co-teacher, they can do this as well. So again, they can open up the intervention room and work with a small group of students. But there you go. The last thing that I would do with this, and this is, again, not a Google Meet basics class, right? I have a webinar about that. So all the extra information you have in other videos, and I'll link them in the, in the description at the bottom. So right underneath this video, if you click on show more, I'll put the links to those other related videos there for you. So I have this, so the only other thing I need to do is I need to download an extension called Mute Tab Extension, and the link will be in the show more, in the description. So what this is going to do is notice if I have all these and the students are active like we want them to be, then this is not going to be okay because I'm going to be hearing all of these rooms at the same time. But if I just download this very quick extension, all I have to do is click on the room, click on the extension. Notice that room is now muted. Click on the room, click on the extension, click on the room, click on the extension. So all this does is mute each of these. And then when I want to hear breakout room number one, I can unmute it. So now I'm listening to this room. These are still muted. You see the M? So these are still muted, but I'm only listening to this room. When I'm done with this room, done, and now I can come here. And that's how you use the mute tab extension. But the cool thing is, if you're talking about an intervention small group room that another educator is running, you don't even need the mute tab extension because they're going to be on their own device. So if I am in the main meeting room and I'm only in one room and the co-teacher goes and takes the other small group to another you know, on their computer takes them to one of my breakout rooms, then we don't need this because they're on their device and I'm on my device. So we're each in only one room, but we're meeting with different students. So very quick walkthrough. Again, I have other videos about, you know, how do you manage Google Meet and all that good stuff, but just a very quick how to do breakout rooms for interventions when you're dealing with two educators that one wants to pull out a small group of students from your classroom. You have any questions? Let me know. Good luck.